Welcome, welcome to Scary Stories, the channel that tells you scary stories. Welcome back to Scary Stories. I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but I was gone for a couple of days there. It seems like everyone on YouTube is getting sick lately and this was my turn. Maybe the FBI is trying out a new virus on YouTubers, I don't know. There's a story a listener sent in a while back that I think would make the perfect thing for me to put out today, and it is called... Dogman Made Me Ill. As told to and read by Peter Bernard. When I was 18 and had just graduated high school, I spent the summer with my parents before heading away to college. That was the summer I became violently ill because of the noxious presence of an actual, physical, real-life, animal and not supernatural, dog man. I need to tell you a couple of things about myself first. On the one hand, I'm a rationalist and a semi-materialist. I tend to lean toward the scientific explanation over others, but I also acknowledge that sometimes the current scientific position is later changed after new knowledge overrules former assumptions. So, I'm an open-minded but scientifically oriented person. On the other hand, I tend to be an incredibly sensitive person. I notice mood shifts in others in real time. I am the first to smell like the gas in the oven has been left on. I hear noises before others notice them, things like that. People like that about me. They call it my superpowers. The other side of those so-called superpowers, though, is that I tend to be hurt by mild teasing, and I find being in large groups overwhelming. People dislike this about me, and it causes them to call me oversensitive or thin-skinned. They can't understand that this is all part of one package, hardwired together. I'm like the canary in the coal mine. If I fall ill, you all better look out for yourselves, because it might affect you next. So... One day I woke up feeling kind of normal and went out back to plan out some of the things I wanted to do that day and that week. Even though I was mainly on vacation, I had some friends I wanted to spend time with before going away, and I had some bits of part-time work that people had offered me money to do for them. I needed that cash, so I had to sort everything out. I went out on my parents' wooden back porch and I plopped in a chair by the table there and started jotting down everything I had to do. Almost immediately I felt that unmistakable feeling that you get when you're about to be ill. I had never had it come on me like that before. I was okay one second, felt that I was going to be very sick the very next second. I'll spare you the details, but it was not pretty. I remember leaning on the fencing surrounding the balcony, catching my breath and wondering what had just happened. I turned my gaze to the woods just past the end of the yard and I saw it. It was like a man, but it wasn't a man. It was like a dog or a wolf, but standing up. It was a wolf on steroids. That's the term that popped into my head when I saw it. There is a wolf on steroids standing up giving me the meanest, nastiest, angriest look anyone or anything had ever given me. It was a dog man. It was standing in and out of the trees. I remember it hiding itself, yet I remember what it looked like in its entirety. It looked like Satan, really. I am not certain how much of my memories are distorted as I had lost a lot of fluids and my brain was not functioning normally. I felt in that moment, though, that this dogman was the reason I was sick and I screamed at him to get out of there. I waved my arms and hollered. The creature walked off in the woods and my mother came out to see what I was shouting about. Before I was really okay again, I told her everything. She could see and smell for herself that I was telling the truth about having become ill suddenly. There was no mistaking that part of the story. I think she assumed that the part about the dog man was a hallucination though. And when I got better in about an hour or two, I was kind of thinking the same thing myself. It seemed like that was the most logical answer. The problem with assuming that this was a hallucination to me personally was that I could remember seeing the thing like I remembered anything else. If that was a hallucination, how could I be sure everything else wasn't also? The only reason I was thinking the dogman was a hallucination was that dogmen are not supposed to exist. If I lived in a society that didn't feel that way, then I would have no doubt at all that this dogman was there when I got sick. In other words, there was nothing at all in my actual personal experience to suggest that the creature wasn't really there. So things went fine for a couple of days and then I went to stay with my friend, let's call him Jimmy. We had been close through high school, but we were about to enter colleges on opposite sides of the country. So we wanted to have some time to chill together since we didn't really know if and when we would get to do it again. 
His family owned a lot of undeveloped land they didn't use, and they let hunters hunt there sometimes. We decided to camp in that area from Wednesday to Friday when there weren't supposed to be any hunters in the area. We hoped that this meant less chance of us getting shot, but the only thing we knew for certain is that if we heard gunshot, it would be a poacher who had no permission to be there. This was our window of opportunity to use the land, and so we grabbed it. We found a good spot, set up camp, and started having fun immediately. We made a fire and roasted hot dogs we had brought with us. We were generally having a very good time. When dusk came and it started to get dark, we started trying to creep each other out with scary stories. I was in the middle of telling an old one from my childhood when I became disoriented and couldn't remember what I was saying. Jimmy asked me if I was okay and I suddenly realized I was not. I got up to leave the camp realizing I was about to be sick. I fell right back down again and now I was dizzy. My stomach and back ached intensely and I managed to get up and stagger out of camp into the bushes to be ill. When I finished I looked up and I saw it. I should have known I'd seen it. It was the dog man only now it couldn't have been more than 40 or 50 feet away in the trees staring at me. Just staring. I could feel the world spinning around me, but I held onto a tree to keep from falling and did my best to shout at the monster. I wanted it to go away. Its presence was making me sick. It didn't go away, though. It just stood there. It, and then it bared its teeth at me, and I immediately went back to being sick. The next thing I remember is waking up in my tent and I could see that the sun was coming up. I knew that the dog man had moved on. I felt fine and I started making breakfast. Jimmy soon got up and joined me but he was giving me strange looks. I asked him why. You sure seem hungry for a guy who should be having a major hangover this morning. I didn't know what he was talking about with a hangover. I had some beers the night before. Did he think that was why I had gotten sick? I told him that last night I had seen a dog man and that was what had made me sick, not the beer. Jimmy didn't know what a dog man was. And when I explained that it was an animal which looked like a werewolf, he burst out laughing and he couldn't stop. He got on his phone and he was barely able to get on the internet through it. This was a while back, our phones were more primitive then and the internet on the phone was relatively new. Not all the images would load sometimes, that sort of thing. But after about an hour of reading up on the dog man, my friend Jimmy started to get a little freaked out. He pointed out that none of these stories he was reading were about the monster making people sick. It didn't have a magical sickness ray or anything. I reminded him how oversensitive I am to everything and asked him if the dogman would make anyone sick, wouldn't it make me sick first? Maybe it was us being alone together in the woods away from civilization, but he was starting to accept everything I was saying as quite possibly the truth. Jimmy suggested we pack up and head back to his family's house. His parents were relatively chill for adults, and they would let us party there instead. Then I wouldn't have to worry about the nausea, and Jimmy wouldn't have to worry about being eaten by a giant hairy bipedal dog-headed monster. I was telling him that I would be fine, and that I was certain the monster had moved on, when the pain gripped me again and I knew it was too late. The dog man was back. I don't remember passing out, but I do remember waking up in a strange room. Panic made my heart beat fast for a few seconds until I realized I was in the guest room at Jimmy's parents' place. I wondered if I had gotten there under my own power or what. The rest of that day was lost with Jimmy's mother bringing me to see their family doctor who of course saw nothing wrong with me and suggested I had possibly suffered from some food poisoning. I didn't tell him anything about the dog man because I'm not a complete idiot and I wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. When we got back to Jimmy's place and he and I were alone in his room playing his old board game version of Battleship, we talked about what was happening. I was sick any time that creature was around, but it seemed to be wandering all over our area. Why had I never experienced this before? None of it really made any sense. Then Jimmy remembered that when they built the new mall up the hill, they took down an awful lot of trees to put that up. Maybe the dogman was a migratory animal moving along to wherever the food was in each season, and maybe its yearly migration was now upset by the shopping mall. Maybe that used to be its hunting turf, and now it was searching for a new place. That might explain why it had been at my house a few weeks earlier and now was at Jimmy's, who lived about 15 miles west of my family. It might continue westward unless it found these good hunting grounds, in which case it might stay indefinitely, making me ill for the rest of my last summer in my hometown. 
I didn't have money to just go away, so this idea really seriously bummed me out. I don't like being sick, nobody does. This dogman had to get out of town. After that, I focused on getting all the work done I had promised people I would do. I no longer could take my health for granted, so I had to set priorities and get the most important things done first. I never really felt 100% well after that, but I don't know how much of it was stress of knowing that the dogman might come around any time, as opposed to it actually being there. By the end of July, I was sick just from the idea that I might be sick. The dogman could have left weeks ago for all I knew. But it hadn't. One night, I woke up in the bathroom being sick. I have no memory of getting there. When I was done, I was so angry that I grabbed my baseball bat in one hand and a big old kitchen knife in my other and I went out in the backyard, screaming for that monster to show itself. I don't know what I thought I would do if he did, but I shouted and screamed at the forest. That was where my dad found me, and boy did that take a lot of explaining. The thing is, when I got done explaining it all to my father, he believed me. I know that's really weird, but for whatever reason, he believed me. Now, my father and I had never been close. He was always the first to lead the cheers against me that I was oversensitive. However, that was the exact reason he believed me this time. He knew I could sense things that the rest of them would ignore. He asked me to describe the dogman in as much detail as I could manage. I said it was tall, evil looking, and very angry. It seemed like it had a kind of intelligence, although not a human kind of intelligence. It seemed very alien, but I didn't mean from outer space. It had tall, pointed ears on top of its head, and its fur was somewhat long as I remember seeing it blow in the breeze. It had a dog-type snout or like a wolf. It was a canine-type creature, and yet it seemed very much like a primate or ape or chimp. It stood taller than a chimp, though, and much taller than a gorilla. It had dog legs, not primate legs, yet it walked with as much balance as a human. I don't remember its feet, but I remember its front paws were deformed looking like something halfway between a wolf's paws and some kind of Halloween claw gloves of some sort. So, I didn't even notice he had left, but about a day and a half later, my father came back from a hunting trip from which he said he had been unsuccessful. He wanted to see me immediately and started to pitch the idea to me that I should go hunting with him. I had never wanted to go hunting with him before as I empathized too strongly with the animals. To his credit, my father had never asked me to go hunting with him before. He might be a guy who loves hunting, but he's also a guy that's not going to try to push you into loving what he loves. But this time, he was insisting. It turned out he had gone off hunting for the dog man. About a day into it, he realized he was finding nothing and he wouldn't even know what to look for, whereas I could literally sense the presence of the beast. If he had me with him, he might be able to find the animal and bag it, thereby curing me of the illness and ridding the neighborhood of a potentially dangerous predator. He was also eager to be the first to capture such a creature, so there was the matter of his ego involved in this as well, but I agreed anyway. It was my first time my father had ever sort of offered to help me out in a way, and at the very least, it was nice to have someone who believed what I was saying about this hairy bipedal dog monster. So, we went off into the wild with each other, and it was fairly excruciating. We didn't really have anything to talk about with each other, although I tried vainly to make conversation. By the second day, all our conversation consisted of my father asking me how I felt, and me saying, okay. We weren't running into any dogmen. Maybe the creature had migrated onto the next feeding area. Maybe we were wasting all this effort on nothing. Then that night we lit a campfire and I wanted to tell ghost stories. Dad didn't want to. I started telling one anyway just because I needed to be talking after a full day of silence. I was halfway through the story when I realized I was about to become really, really sick. I tried to stand up and fell face forward into the fire being caught at the last second by my father who saved me from possibly burning to death. The rest of what happened is blurry and partially I know the story from my father telling me about it later. I remember laying on my side in a lot of pain and the monster was there. My head was literally on the ground so that wolf thing looked 75 feet tall to me. The ground shook as my father began firing. I had no problem with this as it was self-defense. The creature had come for us and my father had a right to defend us. I just remember the explosions and then I was asleep. When I woke up, it was before dawn. I was back in my tent in my sleeping bag and I wondered if I had dreamed the events of the night before. I had to wait till dawn to quiz my father, but when the sun finally came up, he explained everything to me. I had gotten sick and he caught me and laid me down. 
In the process of doing so, he spotted the creature just as I had described it, standing just within the wood line staring at us. It was much larger than he had been expecting it to be. It walked out of the woods and he began firing. He said he brought a weapon that should have felled a bear, but the creature didn't even flinch when he was hit. Rather than falling, the animal only got angrier and it screamed at my father. He dropped his gun and realized he was at the mercy of this beast. Then, instead of finishing him off, the monster simply turned around and walked back into the woods and was gone. Now, as I've said already, I view myself as a scientific rationalist, so I don't see anything in this story that would lead me to think that this was anything other than a kind of animal which is noxious and toxic for humans to be around. Possibly it emitted an odor that I couldn't consciously smell, but which made me sick. Another possibility is that it gave off vibrations like infrasound, which can sometimes be very dangerous for humans to be around. Whatever it was, I'm certain there was and is a scientific and rational explanation for it. My father, on the other hand, found his religion on the day he saw that dog man. He became convinced that this was an agent of the devil because anything natural falls when you shoot it. He started going to church on Sunday mornings instead of hunting, and even now in the nursing home, the walls in his room are lined with crucifixes. The incident completely and totally changed him as a person. And maybe that's why this all happened, who knows? Neither of us ever saw the dogman again, and I've mostly had a healthy adulthood so far as well. I guess part of that is that Dad doesn't go hunting anymore, and I don't leave the confines of the city. I wonder if we're going to hear more stories like this over the years as humanity more and more encroaches on the land held for so many generations by Dogman. Dogman capsized my kayak as told to and read by Peter Bernard. I've told this story to a few friends and I got laughed at once, ridiculed the second time, and the third time I was told that I hadn't seen a dogman, I had seen a Sasquatch. At that point, I gave up trying to tell friends about what happened at all. I was going to remain silent forever, but I figured nothing would be lost by me adding an anonymous version of the events to your show. Okay, I was out kayaking in the Everglades with some friends while on spring break, back when I was just 21 years old. My friends were also about the same age, and their names were Roko, Jelka, his girlfriend, and Karina, who was my girlfriend. Roko and Jelka were Croatian, and I forget why they were in America, like a student exchange or something, but we were really only friends for that one year while they were here. Now we keep in touch on minds a bit, but I haven't asked them in person to tell this story, so the less said about them, the better. I'm not trying to expose them to ridicule just to tell my story. So... We were kayaking through the Everglades without a guide, which is not something you should ever do. We were idiots, but that doesn't mean you have to be. The thing that happened to us was so weird that it probably might never ever happen to anyone else ever again, but we weren't even prepared for any of the well-known dangers down there either. And by not prepared, I mean both in terms of equipment or mentality. Okay, I have no idea exactly where we were, except that there were trees on either side and it was a long body of water. Sometimes the trees would come up super close to the boat and we could see the little lizards crawling all over them like cockroaches. Who knows how many snakes and other dangerous animals we were right up next to, but too lost in our own little world to even notice. Then again, we were so loud that we probably scared most everything away. I thought it was kind of cool how in some places the roots of the trees were all above ground. I guess they hadn't always been, but the water constantly flowing changes many things. We were having too much fun to notice that it was getting later. Karina told me she was seeing eye shine coming from inside the roots looking at us, and I thought she was joking. It sounded like she was doing her fake scared voice, but it turned out that sounded the same as her real scared voice, and she started getting me a little scared too. I figured they were alligators or snakes or that kind of thing. We decided to make a turn off, thinking it would lead us back towards civilization. We were more than a little wrong about that. So the night started coming on and we were kayaking with no compasses or maps or idea where we were heading. It was already getting hard to see in front of us. Roko suggested we get out and camp and the other three of us shouted to him that he was a moron. We kept rowing, growing pretty tired. I know I felt like my arms were going to fall off and I was in the best shape of the four of us. 
We were exhausted and decided to try to nap there on the water. I know, that was not a good idea. We were supposed to take turns sleeping. I don't know, when you're really tired, your ability to reason becomes fractured. So, I don't know what happened exactly, but the next thing is I'm waking up because I've been hit from below by something. I screamed and was very disoriented waking up. It looked like everyone else was waking up too, but it was so dark I might have imagined that. I had my flashlight out in a second, shining it around in the water and not seeing what bumped me. I told everyone what happened and asked if alligators did that. Nobody knew. Somebody said I had just imagined it in a dream and then in the middle of a very loud splashing sound, a dog rose up out of the water and started climbing on top of my kayak. We all screamed and I started to beat it back with my oar and then with my fists. The thing turned me over and I was entirely submerged, then back up in the air again. I could see absolutely nothing under the water and could barely make any more out in the night air. Roko came close enough to hit the water wolf hard a few times and the thing simply dropped down into the water like a dead weight, disappearing completely. That did not happen. Dogs are not fish. Karina was becoming delirious. With another loud splashing sound, we saw the creature emerge from the water onto the shoreline. It was a dog and it was huge. We could smell wet dog all over and it was nasty. We watched as the dog shook himself off, water spraying everywhere. And then, to our great surprise, he stood up on his hind legs. We were now looking at the back of a six or seven foot tall creature, covered in fur and dripping wet. I shone my flashlight on the animal and it turned around and squinted into the light, and then it screamed at us. <laughs> I felt like it had just slapped me around and I cried as I started paddling out of there. That creature had scared me more than I had ever been scared in my life and I paddled so hard using reserves of strength far greater than I should have had. We all paddled and we were truly panicked as the creature decided to follow along on the shoreline. We could see him some of the time. Then he would be out of sight behind trees and we would wonder if the horror was over. Then we would hear him in the brush and we'd start paddling faster and faster. One time he ran ahead of us and dove in the water. We had no idea what to do and stopped paddling. I think someone tried to paddle backward against the current. The dog just swam across in front of us to the other side that continued along, trailing us on our journey. We soon saw why as there was no passage on the right coming up for a while. Of course the dog man would have known that before reaching the spot. This was a creature in his own habitat, and we were very far from ours. Roko thought the creature was hurting us and said we should not follow it. I asked him where else we could go except down the river since it wasn't like we had a helicopter. He started bickering and the two women started fighting as well and then the dogman roared. <laughs> That shut us up. We paddled dutifully from then on, not speaking, trying not to even think. Morning came and Karina noticed we hadn't seen or heard the dog for a while. We eventually found a place to land near some buildings and wandered from there until we were suddenly in some town where we got ourselves breakfast. And that was that. We were just back to civilization like nothing had happened. And really it almost was like nothing had. We could have lost our lives, but we didn't, and so it might as well have been a dream. Who ever heard of a werewolf in the Everglades? And who ever heard of an aquatic dog that attacks boats from underneath? Even people who believe in dogmen aren't going to believe in a story like that. And yet, that is exactly what I remember happening the night I almost got drowned by Dogman. Yeah! And now, get ready for an all-new, completely uncensored, slightly bloody, and absolutely terrifying 
new dog man story oh wait youtube won't allow me to tell you stories like that on this channel if you want to hear that you're gonna to have to go to peterbernard.com and sign up for our paid subscribers club you can choose any price you can afford for a one month subscription and then every weekend we tell you a story youtube would never allow us to tell you on this channel See you this Sunday for an all new, very scary, completely uncensored Dogman story. I'd like to take a moment to say that if you have a scary story you'd like to tell us here, you can write Peter at PeterBernard.com or you can call our new Scary Stories hotline number and leave it to us in the form of a voicemail message. It's easy to remember. 804-LESCARY. That's 804-L-E-S-C-A-R-Y or... 804-537-2279 Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. Story.